illustration line by line, just deleting whatever lines you want or quickly inserting whatever lines you want. Um, it's awesome as, as far as that feature goes. It can allow you to change the configs very, very quickly. All right, let's go ahead and get started with installation. Okay, let's go over our lab setup and just clear up a few things that might be confusing before we get started. Number one, in our lab setup here, we've got uh, the 192.168.1.101 server up here having already downloaded the SDM software. So there's a directory over here with all that's needed to either install SDM on a PC or a router. And I keep saying SDM, but remember it's Router and Security Device Manager is the full name of it. So I just said there's two choices. When you install SDM, you can either install SDM on a PC or you can install it on a router. Why would you do one or the other or both even? Well, if you install SDM on the router, you're going to notice that the router can be managed from any PC that has a supporting browser. And the application is actually running from that router once the connection is made. If you run SDM from a PC, then that PC can basically manage any router that has the supporting configs for that type of management. There are two types, or two steps, to setting up a router for SDM management. The router has to have the configs that support SDM management and the router also has to have files in its flash that support SDM management. Okay, that's if you decide to install SDM on the router. If you decide to install SDM on the router, you have to do both of these things. There are configs and files that need to be in Flash. However, if you decide to install SDM on the PC, then the only thing the devices need that you'll be managing from that PC are configs. So obviously the benefit to doing it that way would be saving some space in the flash of the device. The benefit to doing it the other way would be that device being able to be managed from any PC that has a supporting browser. The last thing I want to say before we get out of here is that you're going to notice a config file for all different types of platforms that they provide for you as part of the SDM download. That config file is, is trying to help you with step one, is, and that is that there are certain commands that enable HTTP management and get your VT lines set up correctly to allow SDM to function properly with the device. And so each platform has its own config file that you can use. Well, the problem with the config files for us is that we've already got a fully routed environment, and they put IP addresses on your FA0 slash 0 interface that doesn't suit what we've got going on here. So I will point that out to you and show you what part of the config files don't really uh, accommodate what I've got going on. And you'll notice that I just cut and paste the parts of the config file that I need straight into the running config of my device. All right, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you. Now we're going to go in and look at some of those config files and we're also, we will also look at some other important files that are in the SDM software directory. First of all, I want to point out the setup.exe. Obviously, that's important. It's the application that's going to install the SDM software on either your PC or the router. You can do it on one or the other or both, and we'll talk about why you would do that in a few minutes. All right, here's SDM tar, home tar, ES tar, common tar, home shtml and then you would want to pick one of these config files here that match your device. I'm going to be doing a 2600 and so I'm going to copy that config file as well and I like to keep these on a TFTP server so that I have access to them when I need them. So here we are in the TFTP root and we're looking for the files that got copied over and you'll see why they are important later on as we go on. 
I'm going to boil this whole thing down to nothing for you so that it's so easy. Uh, you can really get lost in what's in these config files, this 2600 config, config file, for example. Um, it's got a lot of banners. It's really designed for someone who is not familiar with the command line, in my opinion. Um, there are some very important commands in here. I'm going to just show you which ones they are and then I'm going to say pretty much you could just put them straight into the device if you've got connectivity with the device and that would probably be a lot easier. So that would be step one. Step one is to make the device ready for this type of HTTP access and connection that SDM is going to require. So you can see these commands here are doing that. They're setting it up for HTTP access and, excuse me, and specifically HTTPS, HTTPS traffic as well. There's an access list in there. You can configure that yourself if you want to. It basically protects the device because if you use this file, it sets this username and password to Cisco and Cisco. But if you already have a username and password in your device with the same privilege level, that works just the same. It's just fine. So this is not part of the config that we need. So, so far, we need this mandatory. The rest so far is optional. And we need this. Truly, that's that's the mandatory part of this file is the HTTP stuff and then what they've done to the VTY lines here because SDM does work through the VTY lines at times and the other thing that's important is that you have some username and password in there that has privilege level 15. Okay so let's go ahead and just copy that right over to our device. Why bother with uh, you know, making it difficult and trying to do a copy TFTP run and all that when I've got TerraTerm and I can just bring it over. That's the lovely thing about TerraTerm. So literally I can copy these commands one by one, copy and config T and I can paste it right in there. It's so awesome. Okay, and then I'm going to go back over and get the other important part and then I'm going to be done and happy because I know there's already a username and password in there with privilege level 15. So copy, bring it over, and voila! I'm not really that lazy of a person, but I do hate typing sometimes because I type so, so much, you know? Too much of anything is a bad thing, right? Except for margaritas. Alright, so let's exit out here and, oh, you know what, before I go, just to be sure to show you the third mandatory thing, even though I know I've already got one, I'm just going to do a username, oops, excuse me, username, uh, administrator, privilege, 15, and password, Guess the best training company in the world. All right, there we go. So we're done here. And all of that without setting up the TFTP access and changing the config file and blah, 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 blah. Now this is the second part to making a device SDM ready. Let's go back to our drawing. We just got done completing step one. We're good to go. Now, if we want the router to actually have the SDM software on it, we have to get those files into Flash. So what are those files that we'll be putting into Flash? Well, they're the ones I pointed out at the beginning of the video when we were looking in the SDM directory. They include sdm.tar, es.tar, common.tar, home.shtml, home.tar and then there'll be a special config file for the 2600. So this is what you'll see me doing next is getting those files over into the flash but not before editing or getting the information out of that config file that I actually need to put into the configs of the 2620. Then the reason I copy it over after that is just to store it there in case I need it in the future.